We are back here with one of our compatriots from the very first ever Unity 4J stream and several after that, my friend Tim Black, amazing media commentary uh, host, YouTube host. Um, you will know him and love him. And here he is with us to give us his take on the events of this week and why it's so important to support Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Hi, Tim. Hey, Susie, how are you doing? Good to see Good, you. Good, thank you. All right. Hey, look, guys. Hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is great to be here. And uh, I, I think that people uh, all over should get the tweets so everybody can join in to be a part of the conversation. Uh, what's going on? Unity for Justice, Unity for, for Julian, Unity for Jay. What's up, people? It's been a huge weekend for us. We've got 48 guests this weekend. Um, so we started the hashtag Protect Julian on Friday, and within three hours, it was trending in the United States, trending in Australia, and number one trending in Ecuador. Um, and it wasn't long after that, within 24 hours, the Ecuadorians were backing off saying, no, no, we're not going to kick him out, after obviously this long build-up across months of really hostile and aggressive actions from them towards Julian. Um, we are so pleased to see that there is so much international support for Julian, but we're still really concerned about what he's going through there in the embassy. And I was wondering if you could tell us from your perspective, what is the importance and significance of supporting Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? And what does he mean to you as an independent media person? Hmm. Well, uh, well, uh, uh, thanks for bringing me up to speed on that. Just before I get started, <clears throat> is there has there been any, any developments? I saw that Ecuador, uh, I think the president was tweeting some stuff out. Uh, they were saying, uh, I had to translate the tweets that they were saying. Have they made any moves off their position? Have they backpedaled a little bit off this talk of kicking Julian out? What Any new developments? Well, they've released an official statement actually confirming that no, they will not kick him out, they, that's what they're saying. Whether or not they actually do or not is another story, but that's what they're saying. Julian's legal team has said that unfortunately they feel they can't trust um, the Ecuadorians at this point in time because they have been, um, they've proven themselves untrustworthy up to this point. And yeah. we know that Mora President Moreno is headed off for another meeting in Washington, DC. Um, I think it was on the 18th of this month, or either 18th of April or May, I have to check that out. Um, there's been developments on the UN front. Actually, three statements in the last two days have come out from the UN in support of Julian. And, um, oh, sorry, excuse me. And um, the special rapporteur for privacy is actually going to meet Julian inside the Ecuadorian embassy on the 25th of April. So we assume that he'll be there, Julian will be there for at least the next 18 days, but we're not sure what's going to happen after that. Well, I, I agree with you. I don't. I don't trust the Ecuadorian uh, president to keep his word. Uh, very flimsy. I know that the uh, the rumors were coming from pretty high up. I wasn't like they were listening to people off the off the street. These these were coming from inside the Ecuadorian government itself. So uh, I, I'll just you know let me just do my piece and just say well the reason why I think um, it's so important to support Julian Assange. All right. So uh, folks out there, the reason why you support Julian Assange is not because Julian Assange. It's not about a person. Okay. We are not just who we are. You support Julian Assange because of what he represents and what he stands for and what his actions have been. So we are the sum total of our experiences, the sum total of what we do. It's what WikiLeaks has done as an organization. It's not individual people in WikiLeaks that we support. We support the organization, the people who have come together to do this thing, which has championed democracy, championed truth across the globe, not just in America, but across the globe. We support Julian Assange because he is a representative of that organization and because of the values that he possesses when it comes to journalism, integrity, and truth. That's why you support Julian Assange. It's not about an individual. A lot of times they want to, see, see what they try to do is they try to discredit a human being. Really easy to discredit a human being when you, you put the focus on that individual, the characteristics, the personality, things about them you don't like. When we talk about what they have done, what they represent, what their actions have meant, we'll be getting to a whole nother territory. This is a territory where we're talking about what the track record has been. And that's really where your support should be. The same thing goes for political candidates. I support Bernie Sanders because of Bernie Sanders' policies. 
I have never met the man. Never sat down and had a beer with him. Don't intend to. Be cool. Be cool to sit down and have a beer with him. But, but, haven't done it. I don't support him because he's an old white guy, old Jewish guy from New York. I support him because of the policies. I don't support Tulsi Gabbard because she's from Hawaii and I think she has cool hair and I love the way she talks. Though I like all those things about her, the reason why I support Tulsi Gabbard is due to her policies and what she represents, what she stands for. See, as long as we allow, as long as we become engulfed in this code of personality with anyone, me and Julian, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, we will allow them to be uh, personally attacked. And that's when your support starts to waver. I think some people support waver because they are attached to the, the human being. And when you hear enough bad things about a particular human, you start thinking, okay, maybe maybe some of that is true. You know, enough bad adjectives thrown against the wall, it can make your support start to waver. So what I want to encourage everyone to do is to focus on what Julian has done, focus on the fact that they've never given up a source, Focus on the fact that journalism, true journalism, investigative journalism, once upon a time, it existed. And WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, this, this organization, and this man, they represent that. Where we go out, we get the truth. We tell the truth unabashedly. You know, have, hell or high water, they used to say. Right? If it's not, if you're not telling something that people disagree with, or if you're not speaking truth to power, if you're not going after the power flow, if you're not divulging secrets, if you're not you know, telling the truth, if you're not putting these powerful people in their place or putting them on the, on the, uh, on the, in, in the their back against the wall, so to speak, then you really aren't doing journalism. I forget the quote, but some of you know it. It's if, you, if, you're, not telling, if you're not telling something that people don't want to be told, then you're not really doing journalism. We would call that being a spokesperson or, or being a uh, p public relations Yeah, Yeah, PR. exactly. PR instead of journalism. So, yeah, so so um, that's why I support WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. And of course, the, the fact that he's been in the Ecuadorian embassy all this time, uh, as a human being, I, I have a problem with that, um, knowing that he's not there on his own volition, that if it was up to him, he'd be with his family and his friends and continuing his, continuing his work. Um, I, I also support Julian Assange and uh, the Protect Julian effort in the Unity 4J because I realize that I know so many things about the way my democracy works, or should I say the way my democracy doesn't work, because of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. So as we go into 2020, we are armed with information, knowing about the backdoor channels, knowing about the corruption, knowing about the deals that are made between the DNC in the news organizations. Of course, we had thoughts, we had assumptions, but now we know it's not assumptions. You are crazy. Susie's not crazy. I'm not crazy. You're not crazy. Lee Camp's not crazy. Jimmy Dore's not crazy. Kim Iverson's not crazy. Caitlin Johnstone's not crazy. We're all very sane. In fact, we may be so sane that it makes them insane. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I support it. Everyone, I'm, I'm sure, if you search your soul and you're about truth and justice, then you will come up on the same side as I do. Regardless of what it costs you, no matter what price you have to pay to support this movement, you should do it because without this movement, there really will be no democracy in this country. Yeah, and what's the old saying too, that um, first they came for X and then they came for Y and then they came for me? Absolutely, they, they, and they are coming. They're gonna keep coming for us. I mean, what did the rush, look at Russia Gate. Look, we knew it, we knew it when, when uh, many of us, uh, many of us are very. We feel val validated. That's it, validated, not vindicated, because we already knew we were right. But we feel validation in the fact that it's just come out that the Robert Mueller investigation that cost millions of dollars into Russia. Well, it proved that Donald Trump did not collude with Russia. It did not prove what they set out to prove. Yeah, they proved that you know Papadopoulos may have lied. They proved Michael Cohen may have done some dirty things. They proved that Michael Cohen, uh, 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 was it Michael Flynn? Uh, maybe he did some things he shouldn't have done. But that's not the purpose of the investigation. The investigation was to prove that Donald Trump colluded with Russia in order to steal an election. And that's not what was found. So WikiLeaks gave me the information and so many other true journalists uh, that I, I'm a wannabe journalist, I guess you'd say. But I'm a truth seeker. And a oh, come seeker. on. You're an awesome <laughs> journalist. I've seen some interviews you've done. You've done some spectacular interview work. Man, we, you know, uh, I'm always learning from the best. I'm always learning from the best. And you guys are the best over there, over at Disobedient News, Disobedient Media. But 
what I'm saying is we knew about Russia because of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and people at Disobedient Media and those who do that hard work. So uh, that's why we support Julian Assange. You brought up a really interesting point, actually, um, by raising 2020 election. Do we feel better about going into the 2020 election without WikiLeaks than we did like with WikiLeaks? Are they such an important source of information? Guys, you never know what you don't know, you know? And uh, of course it's painful not to have WikiLeaks able to publish like they, I, I don't know the state of it. I really don't know the state of WikiLeaks at the moment, but yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset that uh, they're trying to stamp our voices. I'm, I'm upset about the censorship. Uh, it was a lot of ramifications from the disclosures that happened over the last couple of years. Um, but uh, I, I feel strongly that truth will prevail because good people will prevail. Yeah, I really hope so because um, WikiLeaks is still publishing. Kristen Raffinson is now the, it was an amazing Icelandic journalist, is now the editor in chief of WikiLeaks. Um, WikiLeaks is still active, it's still functioning as an organization, but they have been um, they're having their feet held to the fire a bit by Ecuador. Ecuador is saying that in order for Julian to continue his asylum, that he can't interfere in the states. Um, that Ecuador is allied with or has diplomatic relations with um, and is restricting Julian's ability to participate in any political speech whatsoever, which is pretty horrific to think that a man can be silenced in front of the eyes of the world like that and in that way. Um, but just in, just in terms of 2020 election, it actually scares the crap out of me to think that WikiLeaks may be given information which is incredibly pertinent and important for the US voter base in 2020. And surely we, the public, would want to know that information and have a right to know that information. Absolutely. Uh, do you, do you uh, have any indication that if they get information, they won't be able to release it? I don't know is the honest answer with you, okay. uh, yeah. answer for you. I, okay. I personally, do, I don't know. To date, they have continued to comment on and publish on um, highly contentious issues. But Julian is no longer on Twitter. Julian can no longer speak. He can't advocate for issues the way that he did for Catalonia when Spain was beating, you know, the Spanish um, Civil Guard, I believe it was, it was beating protesters, maiming protesters on the streets. Julian was um, the catalyst who brought the attention of the entire world media to that issue and I just think God only knows what issues there are this year and you know the great irony would be if inf if WikiLeaks had information about Trump if, inf if information about Trump campaign was given to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks was put in a position where they're being intimidated um, out of out of publishing yeah, that's I do remember there's a, there is a quote from Julian sorry to interrupt but there is a quote from Julian where he says WikiLeaks must publish WikiLeaks must publish or be damned yeah, yeah. And, and someone mentioned to me a couple of days ago that maybe uh, part of the part of the push under the Trump administration to uh, to try Julian Assange is under the pretense that maybe he does have information about Trump. So I, I hadn't considered that. You know, uh, I just felt I just thought, well, if they had it, they would have pulled it out. There's no reason why they wouldn't have put it out. Uh, maybe that there's something to that. Who knows? Well, you know, there's a, actually, there's a huge misunderstanding about that. Um, okay. It's a bit of a cover-up, actually. And that's that in the DNC leaks, there was information on Trump and that was detrimental to Trump because all of the Clinton campaign opposition research on Trump was published by WikiLeaks in the DNC leaks. And I actually spent a day reading through all Trump campaign financial information, the super PAC information, who the donors were, where the money was coming from, et cetera, et cetera. And I got that information from WikiLeaks. Wow. So, but no one will tell you that. The media won't tell you that. The media will say, oh, WikiLeaks has never published information about Trump. That's actually bullshit. Excuse my language. No, 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 no. That's, uh, it's bullshit, it's bullshit. That's very interesting. You know what? I, I, I slipped my mind totally. That you're right. The focus has been on the DNC and not what was released in regards to Trump. Um, I, I know that uh, Donald Trump has been. You know, I guess he feels exonerated at this point. <laughs> he feels, uh, and he's going to be using that in 2020. It's going to be very hard to 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 defeat the Donald Trump 
now that they, they, the Democrats and the liberal media has run, corporate media, I should call them, corporate media, has run three years of fundraising using Russia. So now what do you oh, do? Right. Now you, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Tim, look, oh, you know, I can't believe I've never done this before, but I've just got, I'm going to screen share. I have just gone to wikileaks.org and I've just typed in Donald Trump. And then I press search and I've got 13,726 results on Donald Trump. And I scroll down and I look, 867 files are from the GI files, which was the strike for a private intelligence company. So there'll be all kinds of stuff in there. 45 from the hacking team files, which is the European hacking team. Uh, stuff from Sony emails, stuff from Cablegate, 14 references to him from diplomatic cables from Chelsea Manning. And then stuff from the Clinton emails as well. Wow. And so I scroll down and I say, what do I see here? Mitt Romney and Donald Trump sound the same on China. Wow. Wow. There it is. Right. Gaddafi tent on land rented from Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and these don't look Loose like. Uh, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Donald Trump's dangerous foreign policy. Wow. Yeah. What is Donald Trump hiding? DNC email archives. How he behaved with women in private. So here we go. I mean, how many times, how many times have you heard WikiLeaks never published anything on Donald Trump? It's exactly, that is the, the statement that the layperson has. Like the average person who knows what WikiLeaks is. And if you ask them, they'll, they'll either say it's run by Russia or they'll tell you it was built to destroy uh, Hillary Clinton and help Donald Trump. That's, that's all people know who, who are pretty detached and, you know, working one, you know, working a couple jobs or working overtime and taking care of kids who who don't have time to track, you know, media stuff. So, yeah. I'm just typing into Twitter now. Wiki, I'm typing in the phrase WikiLeaks never published anything on Donald Trump, and I'm just seeing what <laughs> results I get from this. Oh, look, here's someone saying they've never published anything about the Republican Party. Well, what do you think the Iraq war logs were? That was all the Republican Party. There it is. Wow. Amazing. So, I mean, that, that's it's, it's exactly the same with the Russia situation. You know, you type Russia in, into WikiLeaks, you press enter, you get 800,000 results, <laughs> including all kinds of dealings, willings and dealings related to all the diplomatic cables from Chelsea Manning and everything. So it just goes to show how easily disproved the smears are. Yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, I believe that they don't want to disprove them. Like, you know, the, that's their whole point. You know, they don't want the truth. And that's one of the most disheartening things, isn't it, Susie, that, you know, you, you go into this thing, you you know, you want to do good work. You know, I, I gave up my career in IT to do this. Um, I'm sure there are other things that you can do. And you, you kind of had this, this weird belief that, you know, truth wins at the end of the day and that people are in things for the right reason. And then you're faced with reality that it's about clicks and views and lies and smears and protecting the military industrial complex and the prison industrial complex and the corporate media industrial complex. It's like, man, I had no idea. I thought, I, you know, it's like finding out that Santa Claus doesn't exist and that, you know, there's no tooth fairy and, and uh, you know, like all at the same time. So it's really disheartening, man, what, what our media has come down to. And, and that's who I blame the most because I believe with more, I actually believed in the goodness of people, right? I believe that people pretty much if given all the information and making decisions, I don't believe everybody's a white nationalist. I don't believe everybody is a uh, hater, a bigot, a racist, a jackass, a, a woman hater, a homophobe, a xenophobe. I just don't believe that. I believe that most people don't want to be seen that way and would do everything they can not to be seen that way. But but when they give the wrong information, <laughs> when you got a media that lies to them on a daily basis for profit, who do it just for the pageantry and the clicks and the money and the views and all this stuff, then, uh, then you get some really bad stuff out of people, man. So uh, it's a rude awakening, but we got to combat it. I think we combat the BS, we combat the lies and corruption and propaganda with truth. And like you said, or be damned, or like Julian said, or be damned. You know, I just can't believe that we always hear, oh, the mainstream media, the corporate media, their, their funding's been cut, their, their staffing's been cut, so they don't have the resources to do proper investigative journalism anymore. 
Well, are you telling me of every single journalist, mainstream journalist that has written about Russiagate in the last three years, that none of them had 30 seconds to type the name Donald Trump into WikiLeaks.org? <laughs> Yeah, they they had time. They just didn't have the they didn't have the approval. This is what they didn't have. <laughs> you know, Rachel Maddow with millions, millions. She's making what seven? Uh, some crazy number, man. I stopped counting. Like you could you could hire you could fire her and hire a whole team. Like this this you know, there's no excuse for it. So they just don't want to. They, they, you're going to piss off the donors and the advertisers. Is what you're going to do. The advertisers, and uh, that's job one for the you know corporate media. It was just incredible, you know, and WikiLeaks, look at the size of that treasure trove, 13,726 documents. Well, and they're just on, just on Donald Trump. And all of these media that cl they claim to oppose Donald Trump. They claim to oh, they, want, yeah. want scoops to expose Donald Trump. Yeah. He's the best it's, thing that ever happened to him. He's their, he's their golden goose, actually. They love Donald Trump. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to exactly that point. That if they <laughs> if they really if they were really opposed to him, they would be scouring these 13,700 files. And instead they can't even admit they exist. Right. I mean, we all know that like uh love and hate, like we know what you do when you hate someone. You don't talk about them. When you hate someone, you really detest someone, you don't talk about them at all. That's what you do. You that's the that's the actual. I, I don't know if anybody out there has been in a relationship where things have really gone bad. I've been in a couple film relationships before I got married. I'll tell you this: when things were really bad, we didn't talk. That's that's really when it's bad. When when people stop talking about you and stop talking to you, that's when things are really gone bad. That's when you pack your stuff up and get ready to leave because that's when you can start finding stuff in your food. All types of bad things happen. So if the media really or if the media <laughs> really didn't like Donald Trump. You would never hear them talking about him. They wouldn't talk about him 24-7. They love that guy. They just send him Christmas presents. Uh, we all know about the, <laughs> the Pied Piper strategy, that whole thing. They built this guy. He's their little he's their little goaded goose, man. They, they grew up from a little chicklet or whatever, you know, and he's just been supporting them all the way. He Every time he drops a bomb, they send him more gifts and presents. They extend his budget. I saw a whole boatload of Democrats voted to uh, give him even more money than he asked for. That's how much they love Donald Trump. Like, hey, I just need uh, $7 billion. Well, we'll give you 15 or whatever. What the hell, man? Just, you know, spin it the way you want to spin it. Drop a few bombs. Make yourself useful, Trumpy. You know, so that's that's their Mother attitude. of all bombs, yeah. Mother of all bombs. Moabs, Doabs, I don't know. But uh, it, 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 I say that jokingly, but it's really horrific, and it's... Uh, it really is, but sometimes you gotta you gotta laugh to keep from crying, because these guys are <laughs> these people are scum bags, and when you got a, I tell you, man, who went for independent media? I know I'd still be in the darkness. I mean, we do what you every all my colleagues who have been on this show, I I love you, even if we disagree sometimes. Some of you, some of you are weird. Some of you, uh, you know, you you need to you need to bathe more often. You always live streaming. You don't eat properly and you drink way too much. Some of you do way too much weed because I've been there. I've seen you in Portland, Oregon. I, I've seen you in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> in Salt Lake City. Almost got me locked up in Portland, Oregon when I was with Lee Camp doing comedy. They were like, here, Tim. I'm like, oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. You know, I'm, trip <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people, Susie, who gets paranoid, man. I get paranoid and I can't have fun. You're having fun. And I'm like, you're going to have to take me to the hospital because something's wrong. Like, I'm, the, I'm that guy. I ruined the fun. You pass me the blunt, then we got the, you know, and then had to take me to the hospital to uh, get me checked out. But the point is, I love all you guys. You are my colleagues, and we all do this do this for the right reasons. Because we ain't gonna get rich. We're not gonna get rich telling the truth, right? You're not gonna get rich calling it straight. You're not gonna get rich calling out Democrats. We just have to call them out. You're not gonna get rich if you also call out Republicans. We all know in the media game, it's all about polarization. You can only stick to one side or the delicate feelings of your audience will collapse and, oh no, he said something about my code of personality. So uh, we all know that in the truth business, you can never, ever expect to become rich. So we are polarization, doing Polarization, polarization and demonization. There it is. Gotta, do, gotta be willing to do that. 
can't you can't make it about facts. I remember Nina Turner gave me some advice. She said, Tim, um, hard on the issues, soft on people. Now I tend to be hard on the issues and hard on people. I'm trying to go soft on people. It's just that I think that these people who are being liars, who are lying, I, I tend to believe they do it willfully and maliciously, which makes me really get my ire up. I really, I, I, I don't know how to hold, pull my punches. I only got one speed when it comes to going after them. But she's right that we should be soft on people and harder on the, on the issues. Um, yeah, I want to give you kudos actually for your Donna Brazil interview on that basis. I, I do, because even though, to be honest with you, I don't think very much of Donna Brazil, but that's actually irrelevant because when you interview her, when you give her a platform, then we actually get to learn about her and hear what she says and analyze from that point. Um, what the sensors do, what the control structure does is, as you said before, they'll just shut you out, won't even talk about you, won't even admit that, oh, won't even admit that you exist. Um, so I think the fact that you, uh, that you platform people and you give them that opportunity to speak is, is extremely important. We shouldn't just censor out those people whose views we disagree with. Uh, we uh, absolutely, absolutely should Susie, be giving them a platform. Two years ago, Susie, two years ago, I interviewed Donna Brazil. I've been apologizing for it ever since. You know, it's the weirdest thing. It's like, but hey, it was right that you did it. The thing, but this is the thing, like people, because people are judging you by association, going, oh, Tim interviewed her, therefore he agrees with her, therefore he's apologizing for it. No, that's yeah. actually not true. When you're a journalist and you give the platform, yeah. I, I'm, I'm against this guilt by association stuff. I think it's a, a really slippery slope. The thing about um, it that pissed me off, but, well, Susie, one of the things about it, I want to say this publicly, first time right here on the Unity for Jace uh, 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 telecast, a uh, telethon. Uh, the thing that really pissed me off the most, Susie, is the fact that a lot of that I opened up my questions to my community, to the internet. I got questions from like 20 people. So I didn't want it to just be about me. And people were still mad. I'm like, hey, I'm asking the questions that people told me to ask. I got a list of questions I need to get to. But you should have took more time rebutting the questions that she, you asked her. I'm like, look, you guys don't understand. Donna Brazil is an operative. I'm new at this. Like, she's been doing this for 30 years. 30 years. She, you don't understand a career. Donna Brazil trains politicians. She's been a DNC chair twice. It's not because she's cute. It's not because she makes. <laughs> she's been a DNC chair twice because she's a, a a very great, a savvy operative. She's the type of person you could ask her, "Hey, Donna, what time is it?" And she'd answer with, "Oh, you want to know the time, baby? You really know the time." <laughs> Remember, the, look, the time, Prince had a song called Sign of the Times. I love that album. It was a great album. You should have got the album. <laughs> oh, man. There was, was this group called uh, The Time. It had Morris Day, had a guy wearing a little suit. They used to do like this. And they had a song called The Bird. And they'd be like, what, what? Oh, man, so much time. <laughs> I do it country time, lemonade on the porch of Louisiana with some gumbo. I like to do a sausage in my gumbo, by the way. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, we gonna have some time. There was a show called Good Times. Remember that? Hey, JJ, that don't mind. Yeah, time, time, time. Oh, it's gonna be some time. We're gonna have a great time. I remember the time I was making time with my boyfriend. Oh, we had a great time having time. Or well, sometimes, oh, and all oh, shout out to all my brothers doing time. Oh man, what time is it? Again? And I'm like, Donna, what time is it? What would I ask you what time it was? I got things to do. So that is it looked easy to get someone like Donna Brazil. It, it seems like it was easy, but you have no idea, man. She looked at me like I was dinner. Like I was a piece of, like she, she was like, oh, this fool think he gonna get me to divulge secrets. You know, never happens. That's her, that's what she's done for a living for 30, for 30 years. Um, but I, I will say, man, I'm still glad I interviewed her. Uh, I think that people use it as ammunition to go after me. There's still some hate pieces, some smear pieces about me. They say, well, Tim, she only came on your show because she wanted to sell a book. I'm like, well, hell, half the candidates come on my show just because they want to get <laughs> donations. That's why people come on shows. They all have goals. What I'm supposed to do, you know, what a, you know that's what everyone does. People come on for, for reasons. But my reason was not to help her sell, sell a book. I wasn't like, go get a book, go get a book, go get a book, support a book. That's her goal. My goal was to get her to admit that she passed that damn question to Roland Martin or to the Hillary Clinton campaign. And she did admit that. That she admitted. So, um, uh, uh, you know, it's still a sore point, as you can tell, but I've, I've learned to use comedy 
to, to hide my pain and my grief. Yeah, to keep it, to retain your sanity, right? And you're helping me retain mine after I don't know how many hours of hosting vigil this weekend. But seriously, that was the, like, chat is just blowing up over your depiction of her because it's so accurate. That is exactly how politicians, you know, they can talk around that question for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And, it's, and by the end of it, you're almost believing them because you heard everything under the sun by now. <laughs> it's like and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and, you know, it's hard sometimes because, you know, you're looking at the person, you know, the dynamics of a society playing, you know, the, the niceties, you know, political correctness. I'm like, okay, is it, should I cut the lady off? You know, or like, you know, um, is it okay to, you know, interrupt her this way? How, what's the best way to tell her to shut up? Like, and you want to be careful because, you know, you, you know, you raise in a house with, you know, rules and, you know, you want to be a good person. You don't just want to be like, Hey, shut up. I'm trying to talk to you. You know, have fun, shut the shit, shut it up. You know, but is that okay to do? I know my audience would have liked it, but I, I don't think my mom would. Like my mom, she, you know, she watches my content. My, my cousins, I have kids. I have all these things going on in my head at the same time. It's all live, it's not recorded. And it's like, what's, what's the best way to go? Um, but uh, I've also had great people on like Tim Canova, which were much easier, um, you know. Easier to get a straight answer out of Yeah, easy and straight. The, Tim's like refreshing. It was like, Tim, so what's up with global warming? He said, we need to fight it. We need to, you know, get out of fossil fuels. I'm like, oh shit, bro. Okay, next thing, you know. So it's, there's some people that's great to interview uh, because they don't have any, uh, there's no BS. And uh, I just love those people like Ro Khanna and uh, Nina Turner and, and, and these people are great. I, I hope to interview uh, some, some of the presidential candidates. I interviewed Andrew Yang. Andrew, Andrew's interesting. Um, um, I want to see what else is what he has. I, I want to hear. I know virtually nothing about him. What can you tell me about him? Uh, Andrew, Andrew talks a lot about the universal basic income, and I like the fact that that conversation is being had on a national level. Um, I, I think that Andrew may have some ulterior motives himself. Himself, he says, "Hey." I, I, one thing I found refreshing, let me let me start positive. I found it refreshing that he's running and he's saying at the beginning, hey guys, if I don't win, as long as my ideas get out there, that's all I want. I like that. Uh, you know, there's some of these candidates like Hickenlopper and Inslee and uh, G G G Gillibrand. I don't know what they're running for. Like they have no new ideas. It's not like they're trying to put an idea out into the world. They're just basically running, in my opinion, to raise their profiles. So that's one thing about Andrew Yang. At least he has more progressive type ideas that he wants the world to consider. Uh, on the negative side, dude, uh, you can't get rid of the social safety nets just because you come up with this idea. I mean, no, like universal basic income, that's great. A jobs guarantee might be good too, but these things should not wipe away, uh, I don't know, people getting food stamps because people need food stamps or people getting child care because people need child care. Don't say you're going to give people $1,000 and then all the problems go away. Let's take this a little bit more seriously and realize there's a, a string of things that, that are wrong in, this, in our society. We got people working, you know, we got people working, but they're making a lot less. No one talks about the fact that 40% of our homeless people have jobs. So it's not just having a job. If having a job was enough, then those 40% of those homeless people would have a place to live as well to go along with their jobs. 30% um, of black children live under the poverty rate. That's horrific. These are third world numbers. We have a third world country inside our country. And when I talk about these issues, a lot of times, say to say it, progressives, but a lot of progressives don't want to hear about it. They want me to go, go back to talking bad about the DNC. They don't want, and then they say, well, why can't we get the, why can't we get the black community to be focused on these things like WikiLeaks? And I've asked myself that question. And here goes your answer, guys. Uh, there was a psychologist who said, Maslow, great psychologist, a therapist, a philosopher, I should say. And he said, there's a hierarchy of needs. Until you get to a certain level, certain level, you know this thing, Susie, probably better than I do. Until you get to a certain level, you can't be focused on other things. If you don't know where yeah. your next meal is coming from, you can't be too worried about who won the Super Bowl. If you don't know how you're going to keep the heat on or how you're going to get the car up, then you can't be too worried about who died on Game of Thrones. All right, so the same thing goes for WikiLeaks. Like, they would support it. Everybody wants to get behind a hero like Julian Assange once you know a story. But if you're being fed it by, by the lying corporate media, you'll never know the story accurately. But back to my point, the, the, the black community, uh, there is such dire straits. 
the average American, the average black family is only worth $1,000, roughly. The average white family is worth $100,000. So we need to accept that. We don't need to, we don't need to like play around. We need to realize that's a big difference and realize just because you broke, you're not average. Okay. Sorry. You're not average. There are some, you know, the, the, you know, there are a lot of people in the country. So this is the reality. So my job is to try to educate the black community and the white community, all communities, but specifically the black community, because, Hey man, let's face it. People like hearing from people that look like them, that they can relate to, to share the same experiences. I grew up in a uh, lower class, lower middle-class family, black mother, black father, black kids, black wife, black car, Tim black, black shirt. That's who I am. And I can tell them things in a way that will, that will penetrate some of the garbage because we got a lot of liberal corporate liberal operatives lying to them on a daily basis. We're talking about Joy Reid's, we're talking about uh, Don Lemonhead. We're talking about these people who are paid to lie to them, right? So, so I'm I'm one of those people, Roland Martin also. So I'm one of those people that can come in and looks like them, who can get them a different version. I can tell them, not just a different version, the right version, the correct version. Because unlike Joy Reid, I say, go look up my source material. Underneath the video, you will find a link that you can go read on Disobedient News Media or uh, or, or, or the uh, the Intercept, for instance, or Common Dreams, or you can go do your own research. Consortium and, News. Consortium, Consortium News. News. Shout out to Consortium out. News. There you go. So that's the difference. You never hear Don Lemon say, hey, and if you got questions, go check out. No, no, because... You can't check out his his bullshit. There's nowhere to look it up. He, he would he would give you his transcript. He would source his own material as the source of his material. You get what I'm saying? So that's my goal. And and hopefully with with more information from WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, we got we got to protect this guy. We gotta. I want to see him come home. I want to see him hug his mom. I want them to live stream the shit. I want to be able to share it with my friends and my family and let them know this time a good guy won. This time the people won. This one's for the people. That's what I want to see. What can I do but clap, really? What can I do but clap? You know, it's that whole cause and effect thing, right? Like, yes, our urban communities are starved. They're starved out. They're under siege. They're under economic siege. Um, and especially our indigenous communities and always have been. Um, and it's been a deliberate thing. It's not something that has organically, uh, organically arisen. It has been by design. It's been by design by those who hold the control and who hold the power and who hold the, the, the purse strings. Um, and where is the money going that should be going into our communities and into our schools and into our kids and into every facet of our lives that urgently needs that, the infrastructure, everything else. That money is going to wars, endless wars, endless wars that are destroying other countries and that are impoverishing other countries and that are creating millions more people who need food and housing and security that they can't have because they have dro bombs dropping on their freaking heads, the mother of all bombs, as we were discussing before, that whole military industrial complex. And who was fighting against the military industrial complex most effectively? WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, because by publishing the internal documentation of what's really going on behind those wars, what's really going on in the diplomatic circles and the political circles and the power structure and the intelligence agencies, by putting that all out there, they were pulling that rug out. Oh, William Binney said yesterday, ex NSA technical director, said WikiLeaks was Toto pulling the curtain back on the Wizard of Oz and showing that the Wizard of Oz, there was actually a man behind there. It wasn't the great all powerful freaking genie. It was just a bloody little man sitting there on that on that chair. And they are men, they're real people. They have names that are doing this to our planet. We actually can find out who they are and we actually can do something about it. And in the meantime, but and, that, and that's the cause, right? The root cause is the wars, the violence, the the power and control and the money. But down here on the ground, you know, at your average Joe on the streets in Chicago or on the streets of South Auckland, where I'm from. I'm not from South Auckland, but I'm from Auckland. On the streets, they are like, where is lunch? Where is lunch? Where is dinner? Where am I sleeping tonight? They're not like, oh, well, this is all because the intelligence military industrial complex and the intelligence agency, blah, 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 blah. They are, where am, I, where am I eating today? Where am I eating tonight, you know? And so this, this is that like dichotomy. This is that dichotomy between urgent need, urgent need, um, and the equally urgent need 
to address the root causes, to dig it out at the roots and to, to attack that system because it's systemic oppression. It is systemic oppression, absolutely. Yes, I mean, in, in that regard, in that regard, there's very, um, there's, I don't want to make a direct comparison because it'll be taken out of context, but the system of oppression, which is inflicting Julian's circumstances upon him, where he is physically restricted in the embassy, where he is suffering, his health is suffering, his life is in jeopardy, his um, nationality was in jeopardy. They, they wouldn't renew his passport in Australia for some time. They finally did in the end, I believe. Um, the situation that he's facing has the same cause, the same root cause, as the people in South Auckland who can't afford shoes for their kids to go to school. And, you know, it's, it's the same, the same root cause that, that greed and that um, the monopolies and the, the extraction of wealth from the many and the funneling of it to the few and the, the imperialism, the worldwide domination agenda um, that has kept so many of us on this planet down and still does keep so many of us on this planet down. Very well said. Very well said. I, I would just add that at the end of the day, it's all about greed. It's really not much, much more difficult to question. Uh, people listen, they say, well, what is this all about? Money. It's always about money. Why do we have so many people in prison? Money. Make money off it. That's why. You go some places in the Midwest, uh, go some places down South, you hear, you'll see whole communities undergirded by what? By prisons. Everybody works at the prison. Wasn't for the prison, there'd be no industry in a lot of these small towns. That's what they don't tell you, okay? Um, when you look at our military, why are we bombing countries? Why, why, why do we do the regime change? Money, that's it. Same thing. What, what's the, uh, what undergirds a lot of our small towns? What undergirds, undergirds our, our, our big, these big corporations, the Raytheons, the Northwood Grumman's, the uh, Pitney Bowes, whatever? What, what is it? Oh. Contracts with the government for DOD, DO, you know, Department of Defense contractors. That's what it is, money. That's it. It's really not more, more complex than that. So once we start looking at that and we start, I, I think people would get it if people were given the information. And I think most people do get it, even if, even if they don't have time to follow Consortium News, I would, though they should. Um, I think they do understand that there's a lot of corruption and that's at the root of it. And their solution, unfortunately, is to just disengage. So right now, part of the problem, Susie, is I have a lot of people that have been saying, well, if we don't get this, or we don't get reparations, I'm done with it. I don't want to vote for anybody. Now realizing that it matters, your vote does matter. That's why they fight to take it away from you. I know our election system is garbage. I get that. But we, that's why we have to overwhelmingly, like Lee Camp says, we have to overwhelmingly get out and vote in order to, to, to combat the corruption, okay? That's the only solution I have. I wish I could just wave my hand and do some cool black thing and we just be able to get rid of all that election uh, fraud, but I, I can't. So uh, po unfortunately, some people think the only way to deal with it is just not be involved and say screw politics. The problem is just, just because you close your eyes at the scary parts of the movie, they still go on. If you turn away, it still happens. And once you know something, you cannot know it. So the reality is we really have no choice because this corruption that we have to deal with that's been uh, exposed by Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and all the good people that risked their careers, their lives, telling this information, all the whistleblowers from Chelsea Manning to uh, Barrett to, I mean, there's been so many people. Um, we have to realize that that information you, you need that information. We need to act on that information because our children have to live here. Whether you want to ignore it, whether you feel like, hey, I, got, I don't have time, just realize that your kid's still going to grow up here if we're lucky. You're still going to have to live on this earth, this planet. So with that in mind, we have a responsibility, and if not just for yourself, but for the person next to you. And I have a responsibility, and Susie has a responsibility. We all have a responsibility because we are enlightened. So if you're the, you're the person that knows it's your job to go out and tell more people. It's your job to go out and spread the word because you have the information. You know. Now that's a response. Knowledge is a responsibility. Hey, man, if you know not to drink spoiled milk and you sit around and let other people drink spoiled milk because you don't want to be bothered or you let them play in traffic, knowing that tra playing in traffic is a, a could take, cost your life, or if you know that unprotected sex kills people and you don't want to tell people, you're sitting around watching people, hey, come on over. Let's have fun. 
and you're like, well, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not partaking. Well, you're pretty much a scumbag. I mean, if you know that this thing is happening and your job is to spread the word, but you're not spreading the word because you're more comfortable because you're benefiting from being silent. And these are decisions all of us in independent media had to make. I made mine a long time ago because I came from the nine to five world. I came from corporate world and I decided I want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. And if I want to go back to line, if I want to go back to just worried about when I can go fishing, who's playing, who's playing in the NBA champion playoffs or, or where can I get a cool shirt? Like if I go back to that shit, then I'm just like this garbage. I'm like, I'm like the, I'm, I'm part of the corruption. So like, like we've been saying, I think the overarching theme here is the information so important. And with that information, I think that's how we combat propaganda. And that's how we get Julian out. Look, look what you did with Ecuador. And they start backpedaling. I saw those, I saw the, the tweets. They start backpedaling because, man, light exposures a damn good disinfectant. Oh man, it, it makes people start thinking different. It, it makes people change their change their tone a little bit when you, you put a, a spotlight on it. And look at that three, what was it, three hours? We were trending in Ecuador. Mm-hmm. You know, Australia, Ecuador, Australia, and the United States. Look at that. Look at that. That's people. So don't tell me we can't do stuff. We're doing it. You're doing it. You just did it. You didn't even know you did it. You did that. It wasn't done for us. Believe me. Jack may be a cool guy if you get to know him, but he ain't he ain't making us trend. You know what I'm saying? He may have a cool beard. He wasn't tweeting. He wasn't tweeting hashtag protect Julian. That's for sure. Uh, Nah, nah. it, It ain't rigged for us. So with all the rigging, all the shadow banning, all the other stuff, we're still able to trend on the spur of the moment because we all galvanize, we all gra- gra- gravitate to this issue because we know it's important. What if we did that with every issue? What if we did that constantly? What if we kept doing that? Well, eventually they try to shut us all down, but we like roaches, we multiply. We like, we like the gremlins, you pour water. I don't know how old you guys are, but when I was coming up, there was the gremlins. You add water, you get more gremlins. Oh, we're gonna drown the gremlins, uh-oh got more gremlins well that's what happens with us with truth tellers so that's what we that's my goal is to continue that that tradition that great tradition of telling the truth and be damn truth to be damn <clears throat> and and i think that uh i think we got a lot of people who who believe it as well i know you do Susie, and and i know i know we're going to have an effect <clears throat> and frankly i want you and the signs to be home one day and they, and they call me up and be like hey tim thanks for what you did bro and i'd be like i hey, don't worry about it julian I just did my part. I'm sure you've done it for me because it is that personal for me. This is personal. That's why I sent out those tweets pissed off that people were making these, these allegations like, oh, they're in, these in, you're in the Facebook chat room saying Tim Black don't support WikiLeaks. I support WikiLeaks. I put my career on it. I'm, I'm putting my face and my name on it right now. What are you doing? All right, do your part. Let's all do our part. So I, I, I take it personal that we have a man dying. Dying. All right, let's stop. Let's stop cutting, you know, let, let's not sugarcoat this for people because it makes them uncomfortable. We got a mother pleading for the life of her son who goes to bed every night wondering if she's ever seen her son again, alive. Okay, so this is real. This is happening. He's, he's being jailed now because he wants you to know the truth. That's why. All right? So if you don't take he that person, right, if you don't, don't take that person, I don't know. Children. He hasn't seen uh-huh. his children in seven years. Enough said. So, so uh, if that if that does that make you uncomfortable, we'll go. Why don't you go donate to the WikiLeaks organization? Share a hashtag if you broke. Instead of buying a cup of coffee, send it to WikiLeaks. Help them out. It matters that he has a legal that he has legal defense, a proper legal defense, and he does. I saw his. I saw the attorney. I saw her in an interview. She was very competent. We need her. We need more. We need. She needs to have supporters. She needs to have three, three four paralegals. She needs a, a chair, a chair, a second chair, a third chair. We need to support this. And if you voted for Donald Trump because you get you didn't like Hillary, okay, cool, okay. I still love you. I don't give a shit who you voted for. But hold your president's feet to the fire. He loves seeing on the. He loves saying on the campaign trail, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks. But now WikiLeaks needs his help. What's he doing? So let's hold this feet to the fire. Don't talk to me about. Don't talk to me about the CIA. Don't talk to me about the military industrial complex being against them. The, 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 all these people, all, everybody grouping up on him. Look, he's the president of the United States. I didn't give Obama a pass. 
I didn't give him a pass. I held his feet to the fire. And I was up to a lot more scrutiny and ridicule from friends and fr friends and family than you are if you go against Donald Trump. I called out the first black president. You can't call out the first orange one. Why? So he needs to, he needs to uh, keep his word. And, and he, used, he used Julian to get elected. And now that Julian needs his help, I haven't heard a positive word come out of his mouth about it. So let's push his ass as well as we push the rest of these, as we continue to push more and more for Julian's release. And for those who say, oh, but the president's being targeted by the CIA and the intelligence agencies and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess who their number one target is? Their number one target is and has been since 2010 when Julian was put wrongfully on a Pentagon manhunt list. Their number one target is Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Donald Trump might be their number two, but believe you me, they hate Julian Assange and WikiLeaks more. They can control Donald Trump. They can get him to sign off on dropping the mother of all bombs. They can't get Julian to sign off on that. They never will get Julian to sign off on that. So if Trump was really against the intelligence community, there would be one very fast and simple and easy way for him to permanently get back at them. And that would be to bring an end to the, grand, the WikiLeaks grand jury in Eastern District Court of Virginia to cancel any extradition order that the USA has um, issued to the UK and to let Julian go to the place that he's been given asylum or to his home country, whichever he prefers. Absolutely. I just want to add, now that you brought up the CIA, um, I just want people to know that this guy, the South Bend mayor, Mayor Pete out of uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, he's, a, he's a horrible uh, representation of, uh, of how far they'll go in order to distract you from reality. Okay, this guy's totally fabricated candidate. And if, you're, if you have a soft spot for well-spoken white guys who have a coy demeanor, a folksy demeanor, know this. He said in an interview that he just he did he he felt very badly that Obama commuted Chelsea Manning's sentence. And anyone who is a military person, who a veteran like himself, who would make that statement about a person who basically gave their life, everything, gave up everything in order to divulge secrets that that in, in, you know. Uh, it just says a lot about who what, who Pete is. So I don't care what Pete said out of his mouth. If that's the belief that he holds, I don't really, that's in the conversation for me. I just want everyone in the independent media sphere, every, all of us, all, the, all of us watching, I don't care if you're libertarian, progressive, whatever you are, I don't know what you call yourselves, but know that a person who would say, uh, would say that Chelsea Manning doesn't deserve appreciation for what she's done, um, she, she ungoing, you know, she, she withstood torture, torture. And she's back in jail again because she what has principles and yep. ethics. So yeah, she just did three three weeks of solitary confinement, nearly a month of solitary know. confinement again. So 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 because she wouldn't comply because she would not comply with the system that wanted to stitch up WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. She was offered that seven pieces of silver, and she said, "You know, nine pieces of silver, whatever it is." And she said. No, I will not take it. I will not take it. I will not comply. I will not be a part of your secret courts and your secret jurisdiction. And, and that kind of goes back. I don't know how much time we have left, but that's kind of like how I opened. That this is not just about people as individuals. It's about what they represent and what they've done, what they're about, what they've demonstrated. And that's what Chelsea Manning has, has done. She has demonstrated what she's about. She, at the core of her, she's about integrity, honesty, truth, justice. And that's why she would not give those, give that information, give them what they wanted, even if her life would be made much better, much easier. Consistency. And that's why we respect Julian Assange, because consistency. That's why you respect WikiLeaks. Consistency. All right? What they've done. So, um, Susie? I that mean, was gorgeous. Thank you. That was gorgeous. You entertained us. You made me laugh my ass off, and you brought it home to the real, the real deal at the end. You know, um, and Susie, it, I have it, a, I have a tooth infection, Susie. I got major dental surgery on Tuesday. I'm on painkillers and antibiotics right now, but I did this anyway because that's how much I care about it. That's how much I want to support this effort. So I just want you to know that. I haven't had a show this week. I love that. I love that. You know, I was actually saying that to someone um, earlier today. I was saying how many people 
had plans this weekend. Me too, had things we're supposed to do, you know, and as soon as we found out that Julian was at risk of being hauled out any minute, we cleared our schedules, threw our plans out the windows, broke our dates, disappointed everybody who was dependent on us and said, sorry, this is more important and we've got to do it. And we did it and it's had an amazing result. But what you said at the end is the most important thing, that he is still dying in there. He still doesn't have medical care in there. He's still under siege in there. And we might have bought him a couple of weeks, but we've got to deal to the, the overarching issue and we've got to do it fast. And um, as we continue to build and we have people willing to sacrifice and make themselves uncomfortable and inconvenience themselves in order to fight for him, um, the better chance we have of doing it. Thank you so much for being here, Tim, with me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.